We're going to step through this parallel projection problem from Code Forces. This is problem 1781A. And in this problem, they show us a three dimensional geometry situation where we have a laptop that is located on the floor of a rectangular prism sized room. And here in this example shown, the laptop is located at coordinates 2310. And then there is a projector that is located on the ceiling at location 183. You can think of this three dimensional set of coordinates as an X and a Y and a Z. For this problem, the X coordinate is represented with the letter W. The Y coordinate, which goes into the page, is represented with the letter D. And the height, which is the Z coordinate, is represented by the letter H. And we are told that when we're given two points, a location for the laptop and a location for the projector, laptop's always on the floor, projector's always on the ceiling, we need to run cables along the walls to get from one to the other and the goal is to try to figure out what is the minimum length of cable that is required to accomplish this. So let's look at a couple of examples. In the example given right here we can see that the green path represents the minimum cable length which turns out to be 47. Let's see how this 47 is calculated. First of all, if we were to start at the projector, which is located on the ceiling, we can see that to reach the front wall, we have to move three units. Then we have to go down the, the front wall with, uh, for a length of 29. That's the height of the wall. And then we ha in order to reach the laptop on the floor, we have to go an additional 10 units back and then the tricky part is calculating the length of this tiny portion here. And if you think about it a little bit, you'll come to the conclusion is it's the difference between this 23 and 18. So if we add all those numbers together, we're going to add the 3 to the 29 and get 32. We're going to add the 10, we get 42. And then the difference between 23 and 18 is 5. So we add another 5 and we get a total of 47. Now in this configuration, this happened to be the shortest path, but if you study the problem for a minute, you will conclude that there are three other possible paths for the cable to run. We could run it against the left wall, we could run it against the back wall, or we could run it against the right wall. And so what we need to do in our code is we need to make four different calculations for the cable, and then print out which one of those four is the smallest. So it's a minimum problem. Now it may look difficult, but it turns out that this is a surprisingly short and easy problem to do. High school students sometimes struggle with this because they don't learn a lot of three-dimensional geometry in high school. But if you were to study it for just a few minutes, I think you'll come to a conclusion it's not difficult. Let's start off by looking at what this would look like in code. In IntelliJ, I'm going to start a new project and we're going to create some code to read in the data. The f input file here first has a line that shows how many trials or how many different problems we have to solve. In this case, that happens to be five. And the first line of each trial shows the dimensions of the room. And then the second line has the coordinates of the projector and also the uh, laptop. So let's write some code to read in this information and load it into our variables. Alright, so here I am in IntelliJ and what we're going to do is we're going to first write some code to read the data from the input file and that's going to be this data right here. You can see for this particular input file there are five cases that we need to handle and here are the outputs that are expected. So right here I'm going to start off uh, by creating a scanner variable and after that I'm going to read this first line 
that contains the number of trials. Now, a common mistake that beginners make is they use the scanner like this. And the problem with using the scanner like this is that if you read for a particular uh, data type, in this case an integer, what's going to happen is that the, when the system is done reading this integer, it's going to leave the cursor right behind, right to the right of the five and not bring it to the next line automatically. And then the next time you try to read something, it's going to be from this same line here instead of moving on to the next line, which is typically what you're going to want. So that's a bad idea, and it's going to create some complications that we don't want to deal with. So a much better way of handling this situation is simply reading this in as a line. And then after we read the line, which will be of type string, we can convert it to an integer using the integer parseInt function like that. And this will be a better, easier, cleaner way of doing it because it will advance the cursor to the next line. And then we can go about reading each of the trial data as individual lines. So let's form a loop to read each trial and run it. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read the next line and then I'm going to split the fields into their separate parts here. And I'm going to assign variables to each of these first three numbers. Recall that the first line in each trial contains the dimensions of the room and that is what we have parsed so far. Now we're going to read the next line, which is going to contain the coordinates for the projector and the laptop. Here we have used the variables LW and LD to indicate the X and Y coordinates of the laptop, and the PW and the PD to indicate the corresponding coordinates of the projector. The last thing we have to do is we have to create some sort of method that's going to figure out what the minimum distance of the cable is. I'm going to call that method minimize. And the last thing we have to do is write that method. Let's go ahead and write that method right now. So as we mentioned earlier, there are four different ways to string the cable. We can string it along the facing wall, the left wall, the rear wall, or the right wall. And so what we're going to do in our code is we're going to have a line of code that calculates the distance for each of these four scenarios and then we're going to find the minimum of those four scenarios. So let's call the four lengths of cable P1, P2, P3, and P4 and then let's find the minimum of those. We had already gone over this first scenario where we're looking at the problem as it's given in the uh, green case right here where we have the 3, the 29, the 10, and the difference between the 18 and the 23 which is another 5. That's this segment right here. And this formula attempts to capture that scenario right there. So this is the one for when it's on the facing wall. We're now going to do the ones for the left wall, the rear wall, and the right wall. So these are our four scenarios, and now this method needs to return the smallest of these p-values. We can do this one of two different ways. One way we could do it is we could put these four numbers into an array, then use the library sort method to sort the array, and then return the first element, which would be the lowest. Another way we could do it is to use the math min function. So that's the entirety of the problem. So let's run this and make sure that we have it working correctly. To run it, I'm going to come over here to the problem statement and I'm going to copy all this information into the clipboard. Now when I run it here, I can simply paste this by you doing a control V. And you can see that the answers that I'm getting out here are 47, 8, 14, 1002, and 17. Let's look at the answers that are given in the official solution. 47, 8, 14, 1002, and 17. So it looks like we've got it working now. So to submit the final solution, I'm going to click on this 
choose file here. I'm going to make my way over to where the file for this project is stored and I'm going to select the Java code and I'm going to hit the submit button and then I'm going to hit the submit button over here. Assuming everything has gone well, we'll get a verdict of accepted and we can look down here for additional details and we can see how our program did versus the official entries. Down here is a much larger set of tests that are run. This will be more useful to you if something goes wrong. You can see what the output was that was generated versus what it should have been.